This is a special episode where we are going to spin and chat. Hello, fiber friends, and welcome to my little corner of YouTube slash corner of my bedroom. Um, my name is Kristen, and I am coming to you from sunny Florida, where it is summer every day. No, it's really not. <laughs> it gets chilly in the winter. We have lots of rain. But it's not all blue skies and sun, but it is very nice outside today. If you are a returning viewer, I'm so happy <laughs> that um, you have enjoyed our time together this year. And if you just stumbled upon this video, welcome. I hope you enjoy your time here. And if you do, go ahead and click that subscribe button because rumor has it, that's a good thing here on YouTube. I'm a new YouTuber. I don't really know much about it other than watching tutorials. Um, I'm new to the whole podcast um, thing. And um, I know they've been around for a while, but I didn't really find knitting podcasts until the end of last year, beginning of this year. Um, so this is a whole new world for me. So this channel is, we chat about spinning and knitting with their hands spun. I do a monthly vlog where we just chat about what I've been working on, what, um, what maybe I'm knitting on with my hand spun, mainly all things fiber. So this is a special episode where we are going to spin and chat. And I'm going to answer some of your questions because there have been some of you who have asked questions in the comments and quite a few of you have found me on Instagram, which my Instagram is Stitched Vintage, if I didn't already say that. Um, and I've gotten quite a few DMs asking different questions. So if you have questions, ask them here on Instagram, however you see fit. And maybe this can spin and chat. Q&A can become a thing. I think it'll be fun. It's uh, It'll be a nice intentional time to set aside and really get and spinning done. So first things first, my wheel. What am I spinning on? I am spinning on a Spinolution Echo with the four ounce accelerator. Um, I love this wheel. It's not the fanciest. It's not this piece of artwork spinning wheel. But for me, this is the perfect wheel. And I don't have any need for any other wheel. Um, it is my second wheel. So my first wheel was a Spinolution Bullfrog and I loved it. I wanted something that could go faster. So in searching, I found the Spinolution Echo with the accelerator. So on this specific wheel, the lowest ratio is eight to one. So I can spin eight to one and I can spin all the way up to 40 to one. So if I'm on one to 40, every one full treadle, my flyer will spin 40 times. That is insanely fast. And I have yet to find anything to spin that fast. Um, I think it's a great, uh, beginner wheel. It's just so simple. There's no oiling. There's no real maintenance to this wheel. You know, I think whatever wheel you choose, you're going to spin on it and you're going to get used to it and you will be able to spin a good yarn on it. Um, I like the tensioning basically. I find I can get the perfect tension for me. When I've sat at other wheels, the tensioning just gets finicky. And if something is moved or, you know, it's just, it's for me, the tensioning system on this, the easy bobbin on and off. I mean, if I want to switch out bobbins, it's that simple. And then it just pops right back on. Everything's magnetic. It's so simple. I can do it with one hand. So that is what I'm spinning on. 
again, for me, it works. I like the simplicity. That's my wheel. This is what we're spinning on. And I'm spinning some Rambouillet. This is the color Golden Wheat. And it is dyed by, created by LCB. I'm going to pre-draft out. So I don't pre-draft the whole thing. I just do a bit and then spin and then do a bit more. Okay, so we're ready. All right, question number one was, I wrote them down, how to spin a more consistent yarn. Um, practice. I will say my number one tip for spinning a more consistent yarn is to spend 15 minutes a day at your wheel. A TV show in the evening, watching a movie with the kids, spending 15 minutes just at your wheel. And you will find after a few weeks, your spinning is getting more consistent. Taking classes is something else. There's lots of classes on spinning. I've not taken any of the ones on Craftsy, but I've, I've heard great things. School of Sweet Georgia, I devoured all the spinning content on there. I'm a firm believer, it doesn't matter how many classes you take, um, how many videos you watch, you're not going to become a better spinner and create more consistent yarns without the practice. So 15 minutes a day. Things you can, you know, watch for is distance of draft, you know, making sure you're grabbing the same amount of fibers each time you draft, that your hands are drafting the same amount. You know, I'm not pulling back this far one time and then, you know, feeding that in and then just a little bit and then a lot. Like I'm keeping my distance of draft draft pretty much the same. They say, they, the spinning police say that your most consistent yarn is going to, and it's true, is going to be a short forward. Um, but that's with practice. If you practice short forward regularly, that's going to become your most consistent. And it, it, you will get, it, you have the most control over your fibers within that draft. I'm spinning continuous back. Um, and I get a consistent yarn. Is it perfect? No. Is any hand spun per yarn perfect? It is not. So since I've been spinning continuous back for so long, I get a very consistent yarn. So keeping your distance of draft the same, no matter what. And trying, if you're going, if I'm doing continuous back, I'm staying continuous back. I'm not doing this and then saying, okay, well, let's go short forward and then start short forward. Um, because that that's going to change. So keeping your draft the same, keeping your distance of draft, how far are you spreading your hands apart when you're drafting? And I like continuous back. Because I like both hands to be moving. So both my hands are moving. I'm pulling back with my fiber hand just a bit, smoothing, smoothing, smoothing on. Smoothing, smoothing, smoothing on. It is for me the nicest way to spin. Okay, so that's creating a more consistent yarn. Practice 15 minutes a day. The other thing I will say is creating control cards. So you can, you're like, okay, this is how thick I want my singles to be for the whole, how do I, because what happens sometimes, especially in the beginning is you'll start maybe nice and thin, but by the time, the time you get to the end of that spin, it's a bit thicker and it's, well, how do I keep the end of my spin to look the same as the beginning of my spin. And that's where these control cards come in handy. So you can see those top two are the singles and then this bottom one is my ply back. So I can stop spinning, hold my singles and then grab my card and then I put that between my two singles on it and I can look and see, are we about the same? And we are. I can 
also pull some out, grab my orifice hook, put it in the center and it will just drop down. You don't need an orifice hook for this. Like you can, I just find it distributes the twist much more evenly. Um, so you can kind of see, okay, this is my plyback sample and let's compare it to this plyback sa sample. Is the twist angle the same? Are we about the same? And the answer is yes. So we are on track. You can also buy control, a spinner's control card on Etsy. And they look, they all look different. But there's something like this. And those little lines are actually grooves that you can set your yarn in. And you can say, okay, I'm spinning at about 30 wraps per inch for my singles. And so then I can keep this by my spinning wheel. And as I'm spinning, I can stop and I can measure, okay, am I still at that 30 or am I getting thicker or thin? The more you spin, the more yarns you spin and the more yarns you finish, you're going to get an idea of what that yarn is just by looking at it. So um, I don't use this a whole lot. It's nice to have, it's nice to kind of compare all the different notes. Okay, this is what this is and uh, all that. But I find this is my most helpful for spinning a consistent yarn. This is more of a tool to use to say, okay, if I want my finished three ply to be 12 wraps per inch, what do my singles need to be? And then using this tool, okay, my singles need to be this, let's get there. And then once my singles get there and I do like my ply back and I, I've sampled and that's what I want, then I can create this and we just go from there. Um, this is my most used tool. I also save them. I have last year's, but they're over there. This is this year's. Um, I just stamp on them. This is super simple. I shared this on Instagram. Um, the outside is just a, a packaging that I had and I just cut up and repurposed. So this was the top of the package and I just cut it and used little loose leaf rings. So if I am spinning mainly bigger projects, um, you know, if I'm spinning a sweaters quantity or something that maybe is going to take a long time, I tend to get distracted. So I'll start spinning. And if it's a big project, then I'll move to something else and spin something else and come back to it. So these make it really easy because you can forget. You can forget, wait, what ratio was I spinning that on? How was I spinning it? What draft was I using? So then I can go back. Oh, let's pull out that card. I can look, I can compare, I can do my ply back, all of that. So I highly recommend making your own. It's simple. It's just some cardstock. You can use index cards. You can use just cardstock that you've cut down. Um, you can use like manila, big manila tags. I know a lot of people use those large, um, like craft tags. Those work too. Just something to wear. You can get your singles wrapped around and secured so you can compare it to your flyback sample and then maybe some notes. What ratio are you spinning on? Um, you know, what draft are you using? Things that if you have to recreate that yarn for a future project, you can come back and recreate that same yarn, right? Which leads us to spinning for a specific weight yarn. Um, a few of you DM'd me about that. Like, okay, I want a DK weight. How do I spin? I want a two ply or I want a three ply DK weight yarn. Where do I start with my singles? That is really where this spinner's control card comes into play. Um, this has obviously the grooves and then the numbers. This is going to be backwards, but it will show you. And then you have all your weights down here. So if I'm wanting a DK, that means my final yarn should be about 11 wraps per inch. This is going to vary, um, but we're shooting for about 11 wraps per inch, which I have right here. So if I'm wanting, I don't want to get this wrong. So I wrote it down because it can get confusing 
to explain it. Um, most of the time words, like my brain and my mouth don't like to work together. <laughs> um, okay. So if we were spinning a two ply, we're going to take the final weight we want, which is 11 wraps per inch and times that by 1.5. And that is going to tell us where we want our singles to be. So 11 times 1.5, I am not a calculator and math is not my strong subject. <laughs> I can do it if I had a pencil and, and paper. I can never do math in my head. Even like the simplest math, I have to have a piece of paper. Um, okay, so a three ply, let's say we wanted the three ply, um, final yarn weight, we wanted 11 wraps per inch for a DK weight yarn. We're going to double that. So I know you may think, oh, it's a two ply, so we double it. No, we double for a three ply. So I'm going to want to spin my singles for that three ply DK weight yarn <clears throat> at about 22 wraps per inch. Now, about, I say about because this little tool right here does not, excuse me, this little tool does not have uh, a line for 22. It has one for 20 and then the next one up is 30. So you want it to fit in that 20 range, right? Um, so that's what we're going to shoot for when we're sampling and we're starting our singles, we're gonna try and get it right into that, um, that 20 range. And then once we get it in that range, then we can do our ply back. And to do a three ply ply back, it's very much the same as, um, so I'm just going to pull it off and we're just going to wrap it up twice instead of once. So we're going to go up once. Oh, I need more than that. We're going to go up once and twice and then we're going to hold it and we're going to try and add a bit of twist into it so it doesn't just ping back so I'm just twisting the opposite way and I can break off the other end secure that so now I have my three ply sample and then I can take this and say, okay, are we there? I'm not going to because I was not spinning um, for that specific weight. But then you can kind of compare, are we there? Is that where I'm wanting it to be? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm gonna take those singles and make my sample card. So that is how I spin for a specific weight yarn. Like if I'm spinning for a sweater or uh, any sort of knitting project, that is how I'm sampling. So um, we said, if you're doing a two ply, it's 1.5 times your final ply weight that you want. A three ply would be two times the wraps per inch that you want. A four ply is 2.25 times your final. And five ply is 2.5 times your final. So if you're wanting a 12 wraps per inch final yarn, you're going to take 12 times 2.5 and that's what you want your singles at so your five ply yarn which who makes a five ply <laughs> um but that's the gist of of um spinning for a specific weight yarn okay this can just i'm not spinning this as a three ply so this can be a tie for my skeins or something okay what is the next question how much wool how much fiber to buy to spin for a sweater? Y'all, is this the most asked question? And the answer is, it depends. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's like saying, how much, how much yarn, how many skeins of yarn do I need to buy for a sweater? As if you're a knitter, you know, it's going to depend. What size are you knitting? <clears throat> what pattern are you knitting? Find the pattern find your size, that's going to tell you, right? Um, and you may have an idea, you know, like, okay, I love this yarn. I don't know what I'm going to knit, but I know I need at least this amount of skeins, right? So when you're buying a sweater's quantity of yarn, 
you, you have what for you would be a sweater's quantity. And as you spin and you knit with your hand spun and you see how much yardage you're usually getting, you'll have an idea of how much fiber you need to buy. But let me tell you my little trick for it. So I sampled this. This is Santa Cruz. This was spun on the support spindles. This is not finished. I did not. This is straight off the wheel. So I spun this on my support spindles. I applied it on my wheel and I took lots of notes because this is a sweater spin. So this is where we talk about grist. And I know a lot of you are like, oh, grist. I hate that word. I can't make sense of it. What are you guys talking about when you talk about grist? Okay. Grist is basically, since most, I feel most of y'all are knitters um, or have some sort of understanding about yarn. So this is a skein of yarn from a local Florida dyer. And this is 100 grams. So each skein is 100 grams and we get 488 yards. This is a light fingering. So I know for every 100 gram skein of yarn, I'm going to have 488 yards. That is grist. How much something weighs to how much yardage or meterage you get. So for this specific yarn, his um, World Traveler, this is B20 yarns, World Traveler, light fingering sock weight. I know for every skein, it's 100 grams, 488 yards, okay? That is grist. That is the grist of this yarn. I feel like most of the time grist is talked about, and I know in the beginning, like it's always like yards per pound. <laughs> um, I don't, and, and at the beginning, that's how I thought of it is yards per pound, yards per pound. Um, but so much, like most skeins of yarn, most uh, patterns, like we're talking about 50 to 100 gram skeins. So for me, I tend to measure my grist in by grams. So this is how many yards or meters I will have per 100 grams. So if I'm spinning for a sweater, the Santa Cruz, Again, support spindles. I applied it 22 to one on the wheel. Okay, this is 13.7 grams. I weighed this, 13.7 grams, and I got 49 meters. Now I go in meters because my counter, so I have a little counter that as I'm skating up, the yarn goes through and it counts for me. That's a meter counter, not a yard counter. So it's just easier. I look at that, I write that number down, and so I go by meters. So I have 49 meters. Now, if I wanted to see, okay, how much yarn do I need for a project? Let's say I want to knit the DRK Everyday Sweater. So I'm figuring out my grist for this. Andrea's DRK Everyday Sweater calls for a sport weight yarn. So I want a sport weight yarn, which is what this is. It measures about a sport weight. You know, when I, I'm looking at my spinner's control card, my finisher, well, I mean, it's not finish, finish, but we're about there. Um, and so if I'm looking at a hundred gram stain, okay, so this is 13.7 grams and I got 49 meters in my sample spin. So I'm going to take a hundred grams, which is what I want to see how much yarn will I get when I spin 100 grams? So I'm taking 100 grams and I'm dividing that by the 13.7 grams that this is. And I get 7.299, okay? So then I'm going to take my 49 meters and I'm going to times that by 7.299. And we get 357 meters per 100 grams. So I know if I spin 100 grams of this the same way I was spinning it, I'm going to have about 357 meters. Now I can look at my pattern, which is the DRK Everyday Sweater, and I can say, okay, this calls for 
for my size, 297 grams, and that is 895 meters. So the grist of the yarn that is called for is basically 300 grams is gonna give you 900-ish meters of yarn in that yarn that it's called for. So I figure out my grist. So for 100 grams, I'm getting 357 meters. So if I times that by three, I know 300 grams of this yarn spun this way I'm going to have just over a thousand yards. So that means I'm going to spin about 300 grams. I'll have more than enough by spinning 300 grams, which means if I'm purchasing, I'm going to purchase 11 to 12 ounces. That gives me some wiggle room. That gives me um, just a, a bit leftover if I need it. You know, everyone's knitting is different, all of that fun stuff. So that is how I figure out how to spin for a sweater. I know for me, I can, if I'm buying a sweater's quantity of wool, I'm getting a pound. I can, as you can see, like depending on it, I can, especially if there's color work or other stuff, you know, other yarns used in that sweater, I can get away with less. Um, but if I'm buying fiber for in a sweater's quantity, I am buying one pound for me. That may be different for you. Just like I may need six skeins of yarn, whereas someone else may need seven or eight skeins of yarn, right? And that's their sweater's quantity. So this is why sampling is important. Um, and this is why grist matters. It doesn't matter in the beginning when you're just trying to figure out how to actually make yarn. But as your spinning gets better, as your consistency improves, as you start to see, oh, hey, I could knit with this yarn, that's when you look at grist. Okay, how am I, I want to knit this sweater. This is the yarn it calls for. This is the weight of that yarn. This is the grist of that yarn. How can I take my fiber and make a yarn similar to then knit with it, right? That is why grist matters. So I sampling 10 to 20 grams of fiber and then figuring out, okay, well, if 10 grams gives me this, 100 grams will give me this amount. And that is grist. I hope that made it more simple and not more complicated. Um, there's lots of chats on grist. There's other like YouTube videos that talk about it. There's articles written about grist. So if what I've said doesn't make sense, read those. For me, comparing in my head, comparing it to skeins of yarn, because that is what I'm doing with my yarn. I'm knitting patterns. So I need to get my yarn to match that yarn that's called for as closely as possible. So then my finished garment, I'm happy with, and it's, it's, you know, what, what I need and what I want. Do you guys understand Chris now? Does it make more sense? I hope it makes more sense. Um, cause I just, I do. I remember in the beginning just being so baffled, like, why does this even matter? Like, I just want to make yarn and that's fine. Um, and then once I was like, I understood it, but like, wait, how does this help me? You know, why am I taking all this time to sample and measure? Like, how is this helping me? And then once I started really spinning intentionally for projects, I'm like, that's when it clicked. Like, this is why everyone talks about grist because now I know how much fiber I need to buy, right? I know, or maybe not even how much fiber, but how much to spin. Um, you know, I do, do I have enough for this project? Well, let me pull out 10 grams. Let me sample it, see what I can get, um, and, and go from there. So I hope that helps. Um, okay. Now I'm not even spinning. I'm just chatting. <laughs> okay. So that's all we have. Spin and chat. I don't feel like we got to spin a ton because I get chatty. Um, so I do have a few um, what to look out for. So next time on YouTube. <laughs> um, so I have had questions and we'll see how this goes. If I even get to posting it. Um, 
I'm not sure how often these spin and chance. I mean, I love to do it like every week, but I just don't. Finding time is hard. So, um, must have spinning tools. So someone has suggested doing a video on like must have spinning tools. So I did make a list of, um, what I deem must have and then nice accessories to have. They're not a must have, but they do make spinning life, um, awesome. So I have five must haves and five, um, nice to have. Wool versus plant fibers. So, um, just the differences and the reasons, um, to use one over the other in, um, spinning. Um, if you're interested in plant fibers, let's connect. <laughs> um, I have a lot of plant fibers. I've not spun them a ton. Um, and we can get kind of into, into that in a different episode. So if you're interested in learning about plant fibers or chatting or going on a little deep dive with me, let me know because we can do that. Um, what else do I have written down? Um, yeah, mainly plying. I've had questions about plying, plying from spindles, plying from rested versus non-rested. Like there's been lots of chat about that. Lots of questions. Um, so thanks for joining me. Thanks for spinning with me. I appreciate it. Um, I would love to hear what, what you're working on. What are you spinning while we chatted today? Are you spinning for a project? Are you spinning just for fun? Are you new at spinning? Was any of this helpful information for you? Do you have any other questions? Let me know. Next week we can chat about either a tour through my spindles and just my thoughts on spindles applying from spindles, um, and all that fun stuff, or would you like to know, in my opinion, spinning must-haves, top five spinning tools, top five spinning must-haves, and top five nice-to-have spinning accessories. What do you think? What do you want to chat about next week? I'm not making any promises, but hopefully I can carve out some time next week and we can spin and chat. I'm hoping this is off my wheel and maybe we'll be spinning something else. Goodbye friends. <laughs>